Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Pebble in the Sky by Isaac Asimov. This is the Sphere Science Fiction Edition. As always, I'm going to read the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, when Joseph Schwartz walked past the Institute for Nuclear Research in Chicago, he raised one foot in the 20th century and lowered it in galactic era 827. He was still on Earth but at a time when mankind had colonised the galaxy and the people of the home planet were outcasts clinging to the soil of a radioactive world. A revolution of Earth's militarists threatened the galactic empire with chaos and strangely Schwartz found himself the only man who could avert the disaster. So I really like this uh, introduction but also I like that he quotes this uh, Robert Browning poem that I know because uh, John Lennon used it for the, for the song Grow Old With Me. So chapter one between one footstep and the next. Two minutes before he disappeared forever from the face of the earth he knew, Joseph Schwartz strolled along the pleasant streets of suburban Chicago, quoting Browning to himself. In a sense this was strange, since Schwartz would scarcely have impressed any casual passerby as the Browning quoting type. He looked exactly what he was, a retired tailor, thoroughly lacking in what the sophisticates of today call a formal education. Yet he had expended much of an inquisitive nature upon random reading. By the sheer force of indiscriminate veracity, he had gleaned a smattering of practically everything, and by means of a trick memory had managed to keep it all straight. For instance, he had read Robert Browning's Rabbi Ben Ezra twice when he was younger, so of course knew it by heart. Most of it was obscure to him, but those first three lines had become one with the beating of his heart these last few years. He intoned them to himself, deep within the silent fortress of his mind, that very sunny and very bright early summer day of 1949. Grow old along with me, the best is yet to be the last of life for which the first was made. And so yeah, he gets sort of teleported into the future essentially. And uh, I like to kind of look at the different ways that Asimov kind of in imagines the technology of the future. And we have a great example here. Uh, somewhere in the bowels of the cabinet, perhaps the most universally popular mechanical offspring of human ingenuity, a bartender went into action. A non-human bartender whose electronic soul mixed things not by jiggers but by atom counts, whose ratios were perfect every time, and who could not be matched by all the inspired artistry of anyone merely human. I find, a quote I love here, I find these earth men to be rogues and knaves, every one of them. They are definitely our inferiors intellectually. They lack that spark that has spread humanity throughout the galaxy. They are lazy, superstitious, avaricious, and with no trace of nobility or soul. I defy you, or anyone, to show me an Earthman who can in any way be an equal of any true man, yourself and myself, for instance, and only then will I grant you that he may represent a race who once were our ancestors. But until then, please excuse me from making any such assumption. It just starts to sound like the people who deny evolution. Well, my brother's not a monkey. That's not how evolution works, you idiot. And so he has this kind of amnesia, and so we get here. The days passed and Schwartz learned a few things. The man was Dr. Sheck, the first human being he knew by name since he had stepped over the rag doll. The girl was his daughter, Paula. Schwartz found that he no longer needed to shave. The hair on his face never grew. It frightened him. Did it ever grow? His strength came back quickly. They were letting him put on clothes and walk about now and were feeding him something more than mush. Was, this tr was his trouble amnesia then? Were they treating him for that? Was all this world normal and natural, while the world he thought he remembered was only the fantasy of an amnesiac brain? And they never let him step out of the room, not even into the corridor. Was he a prisoner then? Had he committed a crime? There never can be a man so lost as one who is lost in the vast and intricate corridors of his own lonely mind, where none may reach and none may save. There never was a man so helpless as one who cannot remember. Someone needs some psychologists and he says, send two psychologists. No, actually, ask them to send four because then they will at least send two. And then he develops a sort of sixth sense, so it says, uh, he experimented and found that he knew exactly where any of them were at any time. He could distinguish between them, for the mind touch differed from person to person. Not once had he the nerve to mention it to the others. And there's a great quote here. Uh, Old men tend to forget what thought was like in their youth. They forget, the th they forget the quickness of the mental jump, the daring of the youthful intuition, the agility of the fresh insight. They become accustomed to the more plodding varieties of reason. And because this is more than made up by the accumulation of experience, old men think themselves wiser than the young. And in this society, people don't live past 60. Uh, they have censuses and stuff and basically take you away when you hit 60. Good to make room for the young. Someone bursts into a room and says, Greetings, Your Excellency. Greet me no greetings, the High Minister replies impatiently. Great line. And then we get this like racism towards Earth people. I don't like Earthies, he said. I never like them. They're the scum of the galaxy. They're diseased, superstitious and lazy. They're degenerate and stupid. But by the stars, most of them know their place. All right, Mr. Racist, Mr. Space Racist. 
So yeah, overall, I did enjoy Pebble in the Sky by Isaac Asimov. I don't think it's one of his best, but there's obviously plenty of stuff that I shared with you. I particularly like how it like contrasted our society and the way that we live with the futuristic society. And again, it's kind of an entry in the Galactic Empire series, so you can read this in the context of the other books, or you can just pick it up as a standalone as well. Overall, I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5. It was the year. So there we have it, that's what I made of Pebble in the Sky by Isaac Asimov. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book, and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.